Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Mustard Seed Leadership Podcast, where we are doing a series about the leader's dress code. How should we as kingdom leaders dress? And the Bible tells us quite clearly in Romans 13 verse 14, our key verse, it says, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it looks like. As leaders, we should be literally putting on the very character and nature of Christ to reflect who our Savior is. In Colossians 3, 12 to 15, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, <clears throat> clothe yourselves with compassion. That's what we looked at last week. Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, today we're going to look at that second aspect, clothing ourselves with the very kindness of Christ. Remember that by clothing ourselves with Christ's character, we are clothing ourselves in His glory. And that's our responsibility as leaders in the kingdom, is to reflect our Savior. So, Let's dive right into it. What does kindness look like? We know the word, but what does it look like and what does the Bible say about it? Well, Ephesians 2, verses 6 and 7, it says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Don't you love the way that God expresses His love through kindness? So in fact, kindness is the outward expression of love. Love is that thing you feel on the inside. And one of the ways that love is expressed is through kindness, the way we treat the people around us. God treats us not as we deserve, but God treats us as His Son deserves, which is such a, a beautiful thing. So the definition of the word kindness, it comes from the root to be useful. To be kind to someone means to treat them lovingly in a way that's helpful and useful to them. In Titus 3 verses 4 and 5, it says, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we have done, but because of His mercy. Yeah, I love the fact that, that Jesus Himself is, is personified as the kindness of God. Jesus literally is God's kindness towards us. That's why when we clothe ourselves with Christ, we're clothing ourselves with His amazing kindness. So what does that look like? He has a beautiful story about David and his expression of kindness. I love it. It comes from 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 3 to 7. It says, The king asked, this is King David, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? What a beautiful thought. Here's the king, bored one afternoon, thinking to himself, Who can I show out of respect for, for Jonathan and Saul? Who can I show the kindness of God to and Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He's lame in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, He's at the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Machir, son of Amiel. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. He was probably terrified. This is now the grandson of Saul, the king who wanted to kill David. Mephibosheth is probably thinking, The king is going to take off my head. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. What a beautiful sentiment. What an amazing way that David treated this man. So let's have a look at a couple of things. Number one, kindness is a reflection of God's glory. I love the way that David said, is there no one that I can show God's kindness? He's not talking about his own kindness. He wants to reflect God's kindness. You see, David had this revelation. In fact, we can see in this, one of the songs that David wrote, it expresses his revelation of just how kind, the, the kindness that he had received from God. It says in 2 Samuel 22 verses 51, he gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. In other words, to express godly kindness to others starts with our openness to see and receive God's kindness to us. Leaders, let me ask you, have you learned to receive God's kindness? Do you have a revelation of the kindness of God that has been poured out upon you? That's the starting point. David had it, which was why he could reflect it to others. Number two, godly kindness to others is motivated by whose they are, even more than who they are. Now take Mephibosheth, for example. Who he was is a lame man who was hiding from the king. Whose 
is he was the son of Jonathan, a very dear friend of David. It says in, uh, uh, what, back in our verse we read, I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. Mephibosheth himself was a cripple, yet David exalted him to a place of honor at his table. Why? Because David's kindness to Mephibosheth was motivated by his love for his father. In the same way, we should express kindness to others, not because of who they are, but because of whose they are. They are made in the image of the God we love and serve. And the very fact that they've been created by God should motivate us to want to show them kindness. People should not need to earn kindness. It's a gift given in recognition of the Father. We express godly kindness to others as an act of worship to our Father in heaven. And third thing, last thing about kindness that I want to share is number three, kindness is treating people in an unbalanced way. Now, what do I mean by an unbalanced way? Well, remember the scripture we read. It said, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Now, his grandfather Saul was the man, the previous king, who dedicated himself to killing David. David was the most wanted man. David was hunted like a criminal all over the land. Now, this is the man's grandson that David was wanting to honor. So in other words, if David had treated Mephibosheth in a balanced way, he would have hunted down and persecuted the grandson just like the grandfather had persecuted him. But kindness doesn't treat people in a balanced way. It treats people in an unbalanced way. Even though someone was unkind to you, the kindness of God reflected means we treat people kindly. Usually we treat others as they treat us. We balance the scales. We're helpful to those who help us. We're merciful to those who are merciful to us. But kindness doesn't treat people as they treat us. Kindness treats others as God has treated us. Kindness is the extra that we add to the way people deserve to be treated. So, godly kindness is treating people as we, sh as we would like to be treated rather than the way we have been treated. So, there's the challenge. Are you dressed with the kindness of our God? Don't let the way others treat you dictate the way you treat them. As a leader, you treat others based on the way your heavenly Father has treated you and the way you would like to be treated, not the way you have been treated. So there it is. Let's dress up as leaders in the kingdom of God as we reflect His glory. Hope it helps. Can't wait to see you again next week. God bless. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Remember, if you'd like the notes that come along with this episode or any one of our past episodes, you can visit outlookchurch.co.za forward slash mustard seed leadership where you can see all our past episodes, all the resources and notes that go along with this. Until next time, keep growing.